wanna go? Think I'm happy about missing Christmas? Well, couldn't you put it off until after Christmas? That's not even two weeks. There may not be any jobs after Christmas. It's so far away. There must be something closer. I haven't worked in five months. There are no jobs here. And we can't live on the day labor I get. I'm afraid of losing the house, Annie, and you're pregnant. Uh, there's going to be another mouth to feed. And what choice do I have? I've tried everything. I, I don't know what else to do. If you have to go, you have to. But I don't have to like it. And I'll do my part. I'm going to take in laundry while you're No. Home. I know you don't approve, but we need the money. You just said so. And the rich are still paying to have people do their work. You should have someone doing your work for you. I'll take what I've got. Thank you. And Bernice will help out at home. It is difficult times, but we'll all do what we have to. I worked for that company for nine years. Everything we saved is gone. If I don't get that job, we'll have to move to a smaller place, Annie. We'll have to go back where we started. Or worse. We work so hard. We put so much into it. We've got each other. And we'll get through it. got some news. I'm going to Kansas City to get a job. It's a, it's a real opportunity. Men wanted, James Radio Corporation, Kansas City, Missouri. 600 skilled electricians. That's me. Immediate employment. Well, the hard part, uh, the part I don't like, uh, well, I'm always telling you to tell the truth, and now here I am stuck with it. I'm afraid I won't be home for Christmas. Oh, no. Your father getting a job would be the best Christmas present we could have. Really? Oh, Bernice. Bernice? Go talk to her, Angus. Sudden attack of homework? It's these stupid fractions. I can't get them right. Yes, I wouldn't go if I didn't have to. And we'll see each other soon, and I'll write to you, and you'll write me back. We'll be pen pals. I don't want to be pen pals. You're the only one here who understands me. Your mother understands you, too. She doesn't listen. She pays much more attention to Lily and Jack than she does to me. Bernice, you know, sometimes we have to do a thing because there isn't anybody else to do it, even if we're scared. And that's the way it is moving to Kansas City for all of us. We all need to be brave. I'll try. I know you will. Now I want you to help your mother while I'm gone. I will. And look after your brother and sister. Oh, I don't want to. They don't listen. They need a keeper. <laughs> All the more reason to help. All right. Well, come on, let me see a smile. I hate the way I look. <sighs> You're beautiful. You just don't see it yet. I am not. Hey, look at me. Never contradict your father. <laughs> ah, that's a girl. In 
Dublin's fair city, where the girls are so pretty. It was there I first met my sweet Molly Malone. And she wheels her wheelbarrow through the streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh. Alive, alive, oh, singing cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. You're an angel yourself, Lily. Do you want to hear another one? Well, I would, but I have to get ready. You should be singing in a grand hall in front of thousands and thousands of people. Oh, no, I could never sing in front of strangers. I definitely couldn't do that. <laughs> I'm going to take a train around the whole country. You want to come with me? I certainly do. You and me and Magic Dog and his friend Real Dog. Oh, we can't have a dog now, Jack. Just a little one. No, no, we can't. Hey! Daddy, could I have a dog for Christmas? Did you write Santa a letter? I did. Good. Only babies get picked up. I'm not a baby. Daddy? Can I have a new dress for Christmas that goes with my azure blue eyes? Yeah, uh, so they are. We'll see what happens. I'll speak to Santa personally. What about my dog? That, too. Angus, we shouldn't make promises. What if something happens? What if? What if? What if pigs had lips? They'd sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to let that old windbag Hoover get us down. OK. Bernice, what do you want for Christmas? Nothing I can have. Well, you don't know if you don't ask. Oh, Angus, no promises. Annie, I'm going to get this job. Well, I'm not saying that you're not. This is as close to a sure thing as we're going to get. I know. Maybe old Inday Cooper could give us some money. Then you won't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. <laughs> well, Jack, I want you to keep an eye on things for me, okay? I will. Off to bed now, Jack. And I expect a new song when I get back. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> Don't grow up too much while I'm gone. Please don't go. I'm so serious all the time. Don't worry so much. I'm afraid without you here. Hey, I'll be with you in your heart. There's nothing to be afraid of. Make sure he gets his pajamas in. Would you do that for me? Okay. I want you to be careful. I'll take care of myself. You'll be all right. I will. But I won't be happy. I see you again. And sometimes I just get so terrified about what's going to happen to us. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Not to worry, my darling wife. I'll get that job and we'll be moving to Kansas City before you know it. I'm sorry to be missing Christmas, but Make it up to everybody. Well, you just go on now, because I can't stand this. Just remember that I love you. And I love you, Annie Fagan. I love the smell of you. <sighs>
caused the depression. Who has something to say about that? It's when the stock market went too high and then crashed. And because of the Dust Bowl, too. People can't farm, and the farmers have no money to buy anything. And there isn't enough food to eat, so it costs too much. And more and more people are out of work, so they can't buy things anymore. My mother says that Hoover caused the Depression. It might be more helpful to think that he's doing everything he can to end it. There you are, Andrew. Your report was fine as far as it went, Bernice. It just didn't go far enough. You ran out of steam before you got to the end. What can the president do, Miss Knight? He's just one person. Why, the president of the United States is the most powerful man in the world. I would think he can do anything if he decides he wants to. Do you think your father's in Kansas City yet? It's been two days. He should be by now. My father says there aren't any jobs anywhere. My father says it's a sure thing. I wish we had that chicken in every pot present Hoover promised. Then he wouldn't have to be away. My dad says Hoover doesn't know his you-know-what from his elbow. Herbert Hoover is the president. He can do anything. <sighs> can you come over to my house later? Maybe I'll ask. Maybe I'll see you. Okay, bye, Bernice. Bye. Please, don't do this. I have nowhere else to go. I'm sorry, Mrs. Rumson. There's nothing I can do. This is my home. 20 years. You didn't make the payments. They foreclosed. Give me more time, please. It's not up to me. We'll take you to the shelter. You can stay there a week. The shelter. <laughs> Please. Please, sir. Uh, my family's going hungry. My child, my child needs medicine. Sure. I wish there could be more. Bless you, sir. Anybody in? Well, what about the jobs? I'm a skilled electrician. We're all skilled electricians here, pal. Well, they advertise jobs. Some of us have been here all night. Stay back! Stay back! Make sure they're I've been here all night. I worked nine years for the Ford Motor Company. I came all the way from Detroit. Nobody asked you to. I want you all to go home. What is it out here? Look, there's an ad. 600 skilled electricians right, wanted James Radio Corporation. Those jobs were all filled before that ad came out. What? Then why did we come from Ohio? I came all the way from Pittsburgh. Go home. There aren't any Wait a jobs. second. Why didn't you tell somebody? Go home. Let's get you. There aren't any Go on upstairs and start your homework. Ah, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. I'm looking for uh, Mrs. Angus Fagan. I'm Mrs. Fagan. Your husband's been arrested, Mrs. Fagan. We got a call from the Kansas City Police Department. What are you talking about, arrested? For what? Well, right now, the charge is assault, ma'am. It seems he hit someone with a crowbar. If the man dies, the charge will be changed to murder. Are you all right, Mrs. Fagan? Is there someone inside who can help you, ma'am? I, I, I don't need any help. I, I, I thank you. There'll be a trial, ma'am. He'll be needing a lawyer. You can tell him that your husband is being held at the Tide County Jail. I'm Sergeant Anderson from the 6th Precinct. If you come by tomorrow, there might be something more by way of information. Just ask for me, ma'am. 
Good evening. Angus Fagan wouldn't harm a soul. He's the gentlest man I've ever known. He's decent and he's honorable. He didn't hit anybody. It's impossible. Sorry, ma'am. F-E-A-G-A-N. I, I want to talk to my husband, Angus Fagan. This is the Tide County Jail, isn't it? Well, you have my husband there, Angus Fagan. Well, could I speak to him, please? Well, will you at least tell me if he's all right? Bernice's father is a murderer. Bernice's father is a murderer. Bernice's father is a murderer. He is not. He is not. My mom said so. She heard it on the streets. Well, she's wrong. Are you calling my mom a liar? You're the liar. Then why is he in jail? Stop picking on her, Charlene. He's not in jail. He's in Kansas City. He is too in jail. Your father is a murderer. Bernice's father is a murderer. Bernice's father is a murderer. Bernice's he is father not. is a murderer. Take it back. My father is not a murderer. Make him out a bully. Stop it. Do you have any idea how much trouble it was for me to come down here? I had to leave Mrs. Finch's laundry and now I'll be late with it. What possessed you to attack that girl? She called my father a murderer. That's no excuse for fighting. How can you say that? Because young ladies don't fight. There are other ways to deal with people. I won't let anyone call him a murderer. You will behave I... yourself as what you'll do and you will leave your father to me. Is that clear? She called my father a murderer. Why are you so mad at me? What did I do that was so terrible? I'm not mad at you, Bernice. Well, you sure seem like it sometimes. I know. I'm just mad at the world for this lousy depression. And I'm mad at those people in Kansas City for what they've done to your father for not letting him go. And I'm mad because I'm having trouble finding a lawyer to help him. And I'm mad at myself for not being stronger. Well, I'm mad too. I know you are, and you have every right to be. But you have to stay out of trouble at school. And you have to come straight home to help with your brother and sister until your Aunt Margaret gets here. I'm going to need your help now. I want to help get Daddy home. Oh, I know you do, sweetheart. But let Mommy take care of that. You're not to worry. Dear Father, I miss you so much. Today at school, Charlene said you were a murderer and we had a fight. I tried to be nice, but I couldn't. I got in a couple of good punches before Miss Knight broke us up. As punishment, I have to write an extra report on President Hoover. He can do anything he wants to, you know. I wish he could help you get home. I need you here. Charlene thinks she's so important. You got her good. It's true my father's in jail, but he shouldn't be. He didn't even hit that man. What's going to happen to him? He'll get out and he'll come home. How? To find out he didn't do it. What if they don't find out? Like, what if they keep on thinking it's him and they never let him go? We've got an eyewitness. 
The man who did it ran away. You ran? I was afraid. Of being caught? No, I'm just afraid. I, I know I should have stayed. Why don't you I give me the helped. name of your accomplice? I was no accomplice. Well, you did it on your own. No. No, why would I do something to get myself thrown in jail? I have a family. Look. Look. They're not so different than your own. They have no one else to take care of them. Wait, please! I need a chance here! Hey! Please let me find a way to help Daddy. Mommy can't find a lawyer. And she needs some home. So do I. And so does Lily and Jack. I can't let them stay in jail. I have to find a way. Oh, I better go downstairs and start dinner after this one. No, Annie. You've worked a whole day long. I've never seen so much ironing. Look, I'm here to help you. That's what sisters are for. Later, I'll get the dinner, and you can stay up here and rest. I don't know what I'm going to do, Maggie. I've tried to call him again, and they still won't let me talk to him. They won't even tell me how he is. He's a strong man. He'll be all right. But the lawyers, they all want their money up front. I don't know how I'm going to help Angus. Eat your meat, Jack. It'll make you big and strong. Magic Dog doesn't like it. Well, Magic Dog doesn't have to eat it. You do. Go ahead. That tastes yuck. Everything is yuck right now, but it'll get better. I don't see how you can say that, Aunt Margaret. Not when Daddy's still in jail. I'm doing everything I can. What if it's not enough? What if they don't let him go? What then? They'll let him go. I'll find a lawyer. It'll be all right. And I want you to stop this right now. Nothing will be right until he's home. I don't know what I'm going to do with Bernice. She doesn't mean half of what she says. It's just a stage. I know, I know. She's still growing up. And I need more patience. But sometimes she could just be so stubborn. <laughs> Like someone else I know. Give her time to find herself. Everything that's going on with Angus. Yeah. I can't stand it anymore, Maggie. I have to know that he's all right. I'm going to the police station. And Sergeant Anderson is going to get the police in Kansas City to let me talk to my Angus. And I'm going to stay there until they do, I swear Go it. in the morning, Annie, after you've had some rest. No, no, I'm going now. They're not going to keep me from my husband. I promised you a chicken in every pot, and I intend to keep that promise. But it will require your continued faith. It will take time and belief in the soundness of the American way of doing things. Do you think he can do anything? Self-reliance is an American so. virtue. There's so Before much that needs doing. Others, we must look to ourselves. It's better to the think that he can than that he can't. Bright. Prosperity is just around the corner. He's the president. America is a great country. He can do anything he wants to.
you doing? Go back to sleep. Why are you dressed? Shh, keep your voice down. I'm going to help Daddy. No, you have to stay here and take care of Jack. I don't want to take care of Jack. I want to help Daddy too. Well, you can't. <laughs> and don't cry. It won't do you any good. Why is it Morgan playing the piano so late? Hey, where are you going? She's going to go help Daddy, and I'm going with her. You are not. And I'm coming too. You're not old enough. I am so. I am six, and I can go anywhere I want. Neither one of you is going anywhere. Magic Dog will tell Aunt Morgan what you're doing if you don't think I've missed you. Then no one will go. You wouldn't dare. Oh, yeah? Jack! <sighs> Get back here. Okay. to Washington to see President Hoover. Why? What's he gonna do? Help us get our father out of jail. Lily? Jack? You know how we're always supposed to tell the truth? That's very important. Well, if we want to see Daddy, I'm gonna have to tell a small lie. I don't mind. Just do exactly what I do. Oh, Follow me. Uh, thank you. Thanks, ma'am. My mother is already on board. All right, go on. My mother's already on board. I know. Um, uh, uh, do you know where my mother is? She's on board. Thank you. That was easy. We'll be there in no time. This is the train for Columbus with connections for our nation's capital. Please, that's tickets. you. All tickets, please. Come on. We're going to get in trouble. Stop whining. Let's go. Hey, you kids. Hey, I want to see your tickets. What are you going to do now, Bernice? Explain that we don't have any money and... How important it is that we get to Washington. He'll throw you off anyway. What? Quick, jump in. Come on. We can hide up here. Hurry, Lily. Okay, okay. Hey, where'd you kids go? He is. What'd you do? Rob a bank? We certainly did not. We're going to Washington to see you in Vancouver. I suppose it's okay to tell you. He's gonna help our father. Good luck with that one. I hear old Hoover's so mean he wouldn't give a starving man a skinny pork chop. That is not true. Now my father, that's a different story. he will give you anything you want. He's a tycoon. He's worth a million bucks. I'm on my way to see him right now. I'm very hungry. Oh my. Can we get something to eat now, Bernice? I'm afraid we don't have enough money. You don't need money when you're traveling with me. My father's got an account with this railroad. Oh, I'm 
sorry. I'm so late. Is everything all right? Yes. Good. I played a wee bit of Mozart, oh. and then I went up the stairs and peeked in on them, and they were sleeping like angels. Oh. I waited and waited at the police station until they finally decided to call the jail in Kansas City. And the people there wouldn't even put Angus on the phone. Did they tell you anything? Oh, they said he was all right, but I'll feel better when I hear it from him. I'll have to go looking for a lawyer in the morning. That foreman is still unconscious. And if he dies, they'll blame Angus. Well, they'll find out it wasn't him and they'll let him go, Annie. Oh. It's late. I'll go up and get my bag. I left it in the girls' room. All right. Oh, I'll make up the couch. I'll do it later, Annie. It's all right. <laughs> do you remember when we used to share a bed? We used to stay up all night talking. We, we always said you wouldn't, but you did, didn't you? Got us in trouble. We were girls then, Annie. Seems so long ago now, Maggie. Another lifetime. I don't believe it. How could they? Oh, no. Annie! What? Annie! What is it? Oh, boy, this is great. It's a good thing my old man has connections. The dining room was closed, and so was the kitchen, but they had to help me or I would have turned in their names. Would you like some? Uh, not me, thanks. I, I'm full. You should have seen the dinner I had. The works. But thanks. Dear Mommy. I'm going to save Daddy. Please don't worry about me, and please don't be too mad at me. I love you, Bernice. P.S. Jack and Lily are coming with me. I don't know what to say. I I don't know how. I'm so sorry. Where, where would they go? I mean, how can they help their father? They're just children. I should have been here to stop them. You can't be everywhere at once, Annie. Yes, I can. I have to. I have to. I'm their mother. I spoke to a clerk at the train station, ma'am. He said he saw three children. Uh, two girls and a boy, but that he told them to go home. To go home. Well, they didn't come home. And I don't know where they are. The oldest one asked about a train to Washington, D.C. He told her to take the 1145 to Columbus and change there, but they didn't have enough money for a ticket. There are an awful lot of runaways out there, Mrs. Fagan. I can't no. promise that... No. See, my children aren't runaways. They went to help their father. What are you going to do? Just throw your hands up and say nothing can be done? We will do our very best, Mrs. Fagan. And we'll let you know when something comes up. Now, excuse me, ma'am. Maggie, how much money do you have with you? I have some. All right, I'm going to need it. I'm going to Columbus after them. But you don't even know if that's where they went. You heard what he said. She asked about going to Washington. I don't know what else to do, but I have to do something. Would you please stay here in case they call? You should leave this to the police, Annie. The police didn't do very well by Angus, did they? I'll find them myself. It's very nice meeting you all. I hope the president helps your father. I hope you have a good visit with your father. That's him. That's him. Come along, Lee. Where are you taking him? Back to the orphanage he ran away from. Where are your parents? On the train. Don't trust anybody, see? Keep one eye on where you're going and the other one on where you've been. Hey! Hey, you kids! That's him! The conductor! Get those kids! I want those kids! They didn't have tickets! Hey, watch I'm, it. I'm sorry. Sorry, my fault. Sorry, sir. Stop them! Stop them! Three. So them run this way. Okay, they gotta be around here somewhere. Was he gonna catch us, Bernice? No. I wanna go home. I wish you were home. 
<laughs> One thing I'll tell you, if they're on the freight, the bull will take care of them. He's the meanest bull in the yards. Let's check the passenger car. Children, old bull does. He eats them for breakfast. I don't want to be breakfast. <laughs> and when he gets done, he picks his teeth with a steel spike. Top of the morning to you, moron. <laughs> Tell me, were you born with that face, or did you just get that ugly growing up? Excuse me, sir. How much longer until we get to Columbus? Well, there's been a slight delay, ma'am, but uh, we should arrive within the hour. Thank you. Kids headed. We're gonna see old Bin Bay Coover. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> We're gonna go see the president so we can help our father get out of jail and be home by Christmas. Lily. He do something serious. He was arrested for hitting a man on the head with a crowbar in Kansas <sighs> City. That's serious. But he didn't do it. What's your name? Boxcar Louie. What kind of name is that? American. Why are you on a freight train? I might ask you the same question. I asked you first. Indeed. <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm a man of the world. A world traveler. <laughs> Ah, uh, you wouldn't believe it to look at me now. But once upon a time, children, these hands held the destiny of mankind. I was on Wall Street. <laughs> the very playpen of the rich. And I, a maker of fortunes, a regular wheeler dealer, a big time Charlie, if you know what I mean. Then came the crash. When you're out of work, you're out of work. It doesn't make any difference what kind of work it was. Our father's out of work. Where's this train going? We're headed to Parkersburg, West Virginia. Yes, we are. But we'll be jumping off a little bit before that. Yes, we will. The bulls in Parkersburg? <laughs> There's a bunch you wouldn't want to invite to Sunday dinner.
do it. I'll get dirty, and I'll hurt myself. A little dirt never hurt anybody. I'm jumping, and so is Magic Dog. You are not. We're not going. The Bulls in Parkersburg are brutal. How do I know I can trust you? You don't. Here. By bending your knees and rolling when you hit, like this. I'm not gonna do that, Bernice. I don't want to. Do I come? Jack! Oh. No! You have to now, Lily! You have to! Jump, Lily! You got the makings of a first-rate hobo, boy. So do you. Will you teach me how? <laughs> what I can, what I can. Are you all right? No, thank you very much. I'm okay. Then there's no time to lose. Where are we going? Hooverville. In honor of our distinguished president. What better name for a cardboard and tin shack? What was that? A dog. No, that. I don't like it. It's just an owl. Was he poison? I don't know. I never ate one. Look, you kids, you want to look your best when you meet the president. I'm going to sit out here and keep you safe. Why don't you go on in there and get some sleep? Go on. Tomorrow morning, I'll show you a good spot to start hitchhiking, and I'll bet you get to Washington before you know it. Thank you. Good night. All this is Ohio. Mrs. Fagan. Yes. I'm Detective Bates. Oh, did you find them? We don't think they're here anymore. What? They were on my train without tickets. I chased them, but they got away from me in the yards. There was a freight for Parkersburg pulled out just after that. Are you telling me my children are on a freight train? The police in Parkersburg will be looking for them, ma'am. But right now we're not sure where they are. Then I'll have to go to Parkersburg myself. Won't I? Excuse me. All right, come on over here. I'm going to show you how this is done. That's east. That's west. You want east. And you want to make sure they see your thumb. But I want to go in the freight train. No, no, no. This is too dangerous. The bulls are nasty. And not everybody you meet's going to be like me. There's dangerous people out there. This way you can see the driver, size up the situation. You listen to your gut. Something tells you don't get in, don't get in. You listen to what your sister tells you. Think of Louie sometime, he'd be thinking of you. Box call Louie. You're a good man, Jack. Thank you. There's a car coming. Oh, nuts. Hey, look. I'll do the talking. And don't get in unless I say it's okay. Right, right. Where to? Long 
And she's now being served in the dining car. Three cars back to the dining car. Today's special hot roast beef sandwich with fried potatoes, coffee, and apple pie. Mm -hmm. Would you care for half a sandwich? Oh, please take it. I'm meeting my children in Parkersburg, and we'll have plenty to eat. Thank you. Look, lady, I told the cops I'll tell you. When that freight train pulled in here, nobody was on it. But they had to be on it. Not when it arrived, not when it left. We got a thing about that in Parkersburg. You okay, lady? You want something? No, I, I just have to think this through. Yeah, you just take your time. Right here. Well, since I don't know where they are, I'll have to go where they're headed. I have to find my kids, mister. When is the next train to Washington? It's not till tomorrow, ma'am. But I got a cousin who's driving that way today, if that'd be a help. Yes. Yes, it would. It's very kind of you to take me all this way, Mr. Needles. Well, you need a ride, and I was heading the right direction. Anyway, I, I kind of got a soft spot for kids. Bernice is 12, Lily's nine, and Jack is six. Oh, I have a picture. They're very well behaved, and they all get good grades in school. Angus and I make sure they do every bit of their homework. That's a good looking bunch. And who's this? That's Lily. She has an excellent singing voice. And Jack, he's a real daredevil. He's fearless <laughs> and funny. <laughs> is this the oldest? Yes, that's Bernice. I see something special. I wish I told her. I hope she knows. But I've had to spend so much time with Lily and Jack, and Bernice has gotten so grown up. Well, wherever they are, I'm sure they're all right. Well, this is where we part company. You kids take care, and I hope you get to see Hoover. Thank you for the ride. Bye now. Merry Christmas. I hope another car comes along. Look, a puppet show. Come back here, Jack. I'll get him. Jack! Jack, come back here. <laughs> Jack, we have to go. Hello, Inveil. Come on, Jack. I want to see inside. Oh, don't go. Please stay. I've been so lonely. Who are you? Madame Magnifico. <laughs> who, uh, who are you with? We're all by ourselves. Ouch. Don't tell people we're alone. That's not people. That's a puppet. <sighs> this is Lily and Bernice. Oh, good. You're just in time for the show. We can't stay for a show. Th th five cents each, and I'll throw in a free fortune telling. I'm afraid yes. that's too much money. How about a penny, then? You're very kind, but we really should be on our way. We're going to Washington to see President Hoover. We're going to get our father out of jail. You want to see Hoover? Well, you're going to see Hoover, and that is a prediction! <laughs> A chicken in every pot and two cars in every garage. That's my motto. <laughs> well, I'm busy running the country at the moment, so I've only got a minute, but I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, but first, put your pennies here on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> 
A penny saved is a penny earned. We can't stay long. That's a short show. Oh, what, what, what is this about a chicken in every pot? <laughs> Where do you come from? From across the street. Why did you cross the street, Mr. Chicken? To get to the other side, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> It's like looking for a rowboat in the middle of the ocean, looking for him like this. You'll find him. Well, at least I know where they're going. So many children are running away from home these days, and nobody knows where they are. It really breaks your heart. You want a stick? Oh, no, thank you. What the? Oh, that looks bad. That looks like Lily. Oh, please, God, it can't be them. No, it can't be. It can't. We skidded. Must have hit some ice. I'm just glad we came along. There you go, darling. You'll be good as new in the morning. She looks all right. You've been so fine with her. Got any of your own? Yes. Bye, Mr. Handy. Call me Andy. Don't take no for an answer from President Hoover. Be bold! We will! Time for lunch, Hortense. Here you go, Mr. Needles. Ah, oh, thank you. The other one's for you. Oh, no, I couldn't. Well, I couldn't eat it otherwise. Let's pour out a bit of that coffee. We'll share that, too. All right. <laughs> if my son saw that horse and wagon, he'd go after it like a loose nail to a magnet. Hello? Andrew Handy and his magical theater at your disposal, <laughs> madam. My name is Annie Fagan, and I'm looking for my three children. How would that be Bernice, Lily, and Jack? Oh, you saw them. They were all right. They were A number one, on their way to Washington to see the President of the United States to get their father out of jail. The President? Where did you see them? Oh, uh, they went down the road about an hour, maybe 45 minutes ago. Oh, thank you, Mr. Handy. Oh, call me Andy. Bless you, Andy. Mr. Needles, they were here! They're just up the road a bit! I'm cold. Where are we now? Right about... here. It's nowhere! There isn't even a name! You don't know where we are. We're lost. We're not lost. What's going to happen to us if we don't get another ride? How will we ever get home? Look, there's the cord. Hey, hop in, kids. There's plenty of room. Come on, it's nice and warm in here. Wait till I get there! Come on! Go! Jack, help me! Go! Ah! Oh! 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 Come on, hurry, Billy, hurry! Way to go, Jack! I'll kill you, kids, if I catch you! Was it me? That you thought bit him! A barn, maybe. Let's stay here. It's warm. Go check. Come on. Good. We can sleep here. Get an early start hitching in the morning. Well, maybe they'll get the guy and they'll let your husband go. Oh, I'm counting on that, Mr. Needles. Raymond. 
Yeah, everyone calls me Ray. I refuse to believe you can be locked up for something you didn't do. You know, I'm, uh, I'm staying at my cousin's tonight. If you need a place. I, I could take you another 40 miles in the morning. You can't see your kids in the dark, and well, we'll be underway at first light. Since I have nowhere else to go, I'll accept your offer. Thank you. I'll take the chance you're a gentleman. You are, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Good. keep going than it is to go back. Mommy will come get us in Washington. I'm sure President Hoover will let us call her. I bet he gives us some good things to eat, too. Big pieces of cake and ice cream. All we want. And when he hears why we've come, why he'll just call those people in Kansas City and tell them to let our father go. And I'll be back in Detroit for Christmas. Christmas we've ever had. That's what's going to happen when we get to see the president. It was so good of your cousin to take me in. She has a lovely family. Well, she really enjoyed you. She doesn't get too much company. Uh -huh. You know, my cousin Eddie's heading over to Front Royal later on this morning. That's in Virginia. Uh -huh. And he was saying he'd be real happy to give you a ride. Oh, that would be wonderful. Well, we're going to meet him outside Clarksburg. You have a lot of cousins, Mr. Needles. Oh, I sure do, Mrs. Fagan. Lots of them. <laughs> oh, and uh, it's Ray. Ray. It's Annie. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Thanks for the ride. Thanks for taking us all this way. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. And Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. I want to talk to Santa Claus. We don't have time for that now, Jack. I have to talk to him, Bernice. <sighs> Santa Claus, Santa Claus! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Can I tell you what I want? Sure you can, kid. What do you want for Christmas? I want a scooter, a dog, and I want you to help us get to Washington to see President Hoover. Right. President Hoover. Hoover goes to Wall Street! What? Hoover goes to Wall Street! I've got Excuse Will me. to her! Excuse Read me. all about it! Excuse me. Hey, get your paper here. President Hoover's leaving the White House? Tomorrow morning. We'll be back till Christmas Eve. That's too late. Uh, you want a paper? What's the fastest way to get to Washington? A bus. How much does it cost? A buck something. Hey, what do I look like? You want the news? You buy a paper. Over goes to Wall Street! At a dance, my cousin, well, I have them too, <laughs> made me go. Well, actually, she dragged me. <laughs> she said I'd never meet a man staying at home. And I met Angus. I was 19. He was the first man I'd ever really been out with. We were both shy around other people, but not with each other. <laughs> Neither one of us could dance very well. But we sure could talk right from the first word. It was like we had known each other our whole lives. I've never thought about another man since that night. He's like the other half of me that was missing. He says the same about me. I shouldn't be talking of such things. But if we could live together forever, it wouldn't be long enough. I don't want to. Lily, I have put up with just about as much of your complaining as I could take. 
Stop whining and get us on that bus to Washington. Now sing. I can't. I'm too shy. Was Daddy shy when he crossed the country looking for work? You're going to sing for us, Lily. It's our only chance. You can do it, Lily. You have to do it, Lily. Sing. Keep you waiting too long. Oh, no, no. I'm fine. This is Mrs. Fagan. Mrs. Annie Fagan. Hello. You take good care of her now. Oh, yeah, sure. It's no problem, Ray. Matter of fact, uh, I was thinking I could take her the whole ways to Washington, if that's all right. I mean, I got nothing better to do. I don't got a job or nothing. Well, there you go. Thank you. Ray, I'm so very grateful. Oh, pleasure was all my name. Look, you better get going. Bye, Eddie. Thank you. Mrs. Fagan. Yes, Eddie. I was wondering if you'd like a stick of gum for the road. Yes, I think I would. Folks, move along. Come on. Stop the singing and go home to your mother, or I'll take you in. Take us in where? We can be on the sidewalk if we want to. Okay, that's it. Let's go. Come on. Move it, folks. A lot of you. Off you go. I'm taking the three of you into the station. But I'm allowed to sing. It's not against the law to sing. Please, please. We'll never do it again. You'll never see us again. You can't arrest me for singing. It's not against the law to sing. It's against the law to panhandle. What's a panhandle? It's begging for money. I wasn't begging. We need the money for our father, so we can come home for Christmas. It's true, even as Santa Claus. I'll never sing on the streets again. Please, we can't have Christmas without our father. Go on then, get out of here. But don't let me catch you at it again. Well, what's the matter with you? Are you really letting us go? Well, it's Christmas, isn't it? Go on before I change my mind. Thank you. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Mister, three one way tickets to Washington, D.C., please. That'll be 375. Huh? Winchester, Virginia, Arlington, and it's uh, number four. DC, it's outside. Four. And it leaves in 30 seconds. Come on, let's hurry. We're not going to make it. 30 seconds. I 
guess all these people want to see Hoover too. President Hoover. Oh, is that right? Get out of here. Not until we see him. Well, you're not going to see him. Go on now before you get in trouble. Just call him, please. Tell him it's very important that we see him right now. Yeah, and I'm an elf. Now beat it! You beat it! You've got a smart mouth, son. You leave my brother alone. We have to talk Psst. to the president about getting our father out of jail. We want our father to come home for Christmas. Willie, Jack, come with me. Are you really trying to get your father out of jail? We are. He didn't do anything, and I know the president would help him if he knew. Well, wouldn't that be something? Meeting with the president. I wish I could do that myself. You can come with us. Oh, I don't think I could get past the gate and... I'm a little old for sneaking. But you three look like you're up to the game. We really need to see him. Can you help us? Well, that's a pretty tall order. But then, I'm a tall fella. <laughs> when that truck gets through, we'll start. Get her up. Uh, there you go. Be careful. Don't go until we tell you. I won't. Thank you. Oh, say hello to Hoover for me. Come on, boys. Back, we want to see the president. No, me. I'm a citizen. Stay back. We got our rights. Come on, get back. Thank you, fella. Get out of here. Get away. What the heck? You can't be in here. I have an appointment. My Aunt Fanny. Corporal! Kid, you, you, come here, come here. No. Corporal! Come on! Some kid just got in here. Fantastic. So where's the president, Bernice? We'll find him. Boy, this is sure a big house. I wonder where he is. The word on Wall Street is that it'll take 50 years for the market to recover. You think I was personally responsible for it? The way they write about me. The people need to know how you really feel about all this. Personal side of it. <laughs> what they need to do is to have faith in the idea that private enterprise and the efforts of individuals will put this country back on its feet. It must be up here. Some kids just sneaked into the basement. She may have come up here. Fred with me. You, come on. Let's check the ballroom. There's somebody up here. All right. Nothing. Come on. Nothing over here. 
I'll clear it. There's three of them. Let's get those kids. Jack, Bernice, Lily. Lady, are you the mother? Yes. The children who wanted to see Hoover? Two girls and a boy? Have you seen them? Do you know where they are? Indeed I do, madam. Oh. They're in there, trying to save their father. President, I think you have to pay more attention to appearances. There's perception that counts today. Now, if you want people to think positive, you have to give them something to think positive about. Back in Iowa, where I was born, the ground was covered with snow by November, sometimes October. Here, it's almost Christmas, and there's not a sign of it. Here and you're not gonna say a word. You got that? Now let's go. March! Come on. I already told you they didn't get in. And I'm telling you they did. This man helped them. It was me. I snuck them over the wall when that delivery truck came in. Nobody gets past here on my watch. Now stand back, both of you. I won't stand back. I want my children. Now get out of my way and let me pass. Take your hands Bernice, off the lady. Lily, Jack! What's going on here? You're going to tell me how you snuck in here. No, we're not. All I want to do is talk to the president. That's never going to happen. You kids are out of here. Hang on, Joel. Oh, Hurry. Hurry. Hey. Hey. People get hold hey. my dad. Come on. There they are. That's them. That's my children. Hey. Come on. They're all right. All right, let her in. Hey. 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 Come on. Mommy! Mommy! <laughs> oh, 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 my darlings, my darlings. I miss you so much. Oh, oh, you're all right. You really are. Oh, my babies. I'm not a baby. Oh, I can't believe I'm looking at you. Oh, where's your sister? President Hoover! President Hoover! President Hoover! My name is Bernice Fagan, and I hitchhiked here all the way from Detroit with Lily and Jack. So the least you can do is listen to what I have to say. Because my teacher, Miss Knight, said you could do whatever you wanted to. I'm sorry, Mr. President. I did a report on you at school and learned that you helped a lot of people in Europe. Oh, my I father told needs you help to get them out of city. here. Just a minute. You hitchhiked from Detroit. Do your parents know where you are? My mother's at home. Oh, I know she must be worried, but I had to come. I wouldn't bother you unless it was extremely important. My father's in jail, but he didn't do anything. And I need you to get him home for Christmas. Bernice! Mommy! Mommy! Oh, Bernice! Oh! I chased after you the whole way. Oh, I missed you so much. Oh, if anything had happened to you. My, President Hoover, I'm so sorry about all this. I 
don't know what to say. Nothing need be said, Mrs. Fagan. Let me welcome you to the White House. And you too, Bernice. Now, why don't you all sit down so you can tell me the whole story? And you must be Lily and Jack. Now, why didn't you come along and sit beside your mother? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's just seeing them again. That's quite understandable. Thank you. If this country pulled together the way your children obviously have, we'd all be a lot better off. I think the beginning would be a good place to start. <laughs> All right. All the arrangements have been made. A car will meet you at the station in Detroit and take you home. Thank you. Thank you for letting us sleep over, Mr. President. My pleasure, Jack. Even though you won't give someone a skinny pork chop, you're still my best friend. What? <laughs> Why, thank you very much, Jack. I'm very lucky to have a friend like you, and like all of you. I promise to do what I can for your father. Meanwhile, you mind your mother and don't be taking any more trips like this one. Yes, sir. Oh. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Let's go, kids. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. I hate to say it, but what if he's guilty? He said he would. He said he'd try. <laughs> I still can't believe you just barged right in on him. I still can't believe it. And I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. With Angus coming home, this is going to be some Christmas. This is going to be some treat. <laughs> the best we've ever had. We'll wait and let Daddy put the star on top. All right. And he put all the presents out. Okay. Am I getting a dog? Well... We're getting our father home for Christmas. I know, but are we getting any real presents? <laughs> <laughs> Here, help me. Hello? Oh, my God. Is it you, my dear Angus? It's me, Annie. It's me. Are you all right? Yes, I I'm fine. I, I can't talk long. Annie, the man who got hit, he he's going to be fine. He he's going to live. Oh, that's wonderful news, Angus. When are they letting you out? Well, they say I, I may only get a year. No. No. I won't let them, Angus. It's only a year, Annie. No. It'll go quickly. <laughs> Try not to think about it. Time's Listen, up, I, Fagin. I've got to go. I'll call you when I can. I love you, Annie. He wants you to know how very proud he is of you. And that he's fine, and he misses you all very much. Will he be home for Christmas? Well, the thing is, well, we'll have to make some is adjustments. Is he going to be home for Christmas? 
No. He isn't. But he has to. He thinks they'll make him stay a year. A year? What about the president? He didn't call, Bernice. He had to call. He said so. pregnant. You're too young to know. I'm not a child. Why won't you see that? No, you're not. You're not anymore. Oh, my darling daughter. You've got the weight of the world on you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What you did took such courage. You tried. You did the best you could. Wasn't it enough? It was enough. It has to be when you can't do more. I'm so proud of you. You are? Yes, I am. And you should be too. You're such a very special girl. I wanted so much to help him. And I couldn't either. Oh, we're a pair, aren't we? Two of us crying like this. Your father wouldn't like it. You know, he'd want us to be strong. What's going to happen to him? I don't know. But whatever happens, we'll stay a family. And whatever has to be done, you and I will do it together. All right? Annie! We're going to be late for church. Well, I think I'll wait for Bernice. Why don't you take the two little ones on and save us a couple of places, all right? Of course, Annie. Okay. They've left. We'll have to hurry. Why should I go to church? What difference does it make? I prayed and my father's still not here. I asked the president to help, he didn't. And you don't think there's any reason to believe in anything. But you'll go to church to make your mother happy. You found your faith when you needed it. It's what got you to Washington. Joyful and triumphant, oh, come You'll find it again. Ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born of king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let And I missed you. I came home to hear you sing. I never thought you'd make it. I did. You so did? So happy. <laughs> oh. Your friend from Washington called. He said to tell you Merry Christmas.
Hello, my love. Oh, Annie. Oh. I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again. Oh, my dear, dear Angus. <laughs> Welcome back, oh. Mr. Fagan. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Fagan. Welcome home, Angus. Merry Christmas. Welcome home, Angus. Merry Christmas, everybody. Good to see you, Angus. A wonderful Merry Christmas to you all.